Because I'm trying to give a TED talk, that's my goal. But here we go. Are you sitting or standing? I'm going to stand. Yay. I'm going to stand, but I'm going to probably vacillate between telling you and going back and reading it. So, not polished, okay? But I love candid feedback, okay? If you've ever had the opportunity to meet my sister, you would realize that she has a most amazing ability to help you see the world in a, in a refreshing and unique perspective. When we were young in Indiana at our lake house, she taught me how to wave to passing boats with my foot. <laughs> When we were young, she helped me swallow the, my ego, like the time we boarded um, a school bus one morning, and she announced to all of my fellow classmates on the bus that the reason why I wasn't the day, here the day before is because I had diarrhea. <laughs> and she gave me the gift of laughter and joy um, and whimsy, like the time she prayed loudly and clearly one Wednesday night at her Bible study class with my mom sitting in the back of the room that she hoped that God would teach my mom how to stop cussing. <laughs> this lady is funny, she's witty, she's clever, she's delightful, and she has Down syndrome. So because of her, I've been gifted with a really unique way of experiencing the world. And as we've navigated almost as twins growing up, I always had in the back of my mind, can we do more? It's been a recurring question that I've always had. And the context is that I've seen her joy and whimsy and love and delight a lot of times inside our home, in the safe space in our home, and then we would navigate out in the community and she would be an entirely different person sometimes if it was a new context or she didn't feel safe. And over and over, I would feel, I would feel that question coming back, wow, I know there's more in there. Can we do more? When we became um, adults, it was really an exciting time for me. When I graduated from high school, I had my whole life ahead of me. I was thinking about which college I wanted to go to. If I wanted to play sports, who might my life partner be? When I turned to see what was in front of my sister, who happened to have Down syndrome, the world looked entirely different. Um, as, an, as a young lady with an intellectual disability, she was mandated out of the school system at age 21 by law. Because of her intellectual disability, the opportunities she had in front of her were vocational training and independent life skills and, um, and day programs or centers. And certainly this was a period of my life where the resounding question came back to me, can we do more? Vocational training is a wonderful opportunity for adults to be absorbed into the, the community. In my sister's personal case, our experience was that um, job, job training programs would come and go based on the budget, budget cuts. A lot of times the job coaches, her individual job coaches, were always rotating in and out. And then she'd find a good program and it would be a good fit, but, but a lot of these had a, a, a term limit, an age limit. So just as she's gaining traction, she was forced out of that program. Um, centers and day programs are lovely and wonderful and it keeps them safe and engaged, but it's that model where it's the all day, every day model. And uh, for my sister's case in rural Indiana, um, a lot of these adults were the same people that she had been attending school with since kindergarten. So, Definitely the question came back, can we do more? Another service for um, adults is um, ILS, Independent Living Life Skills Coaches. And that is a wonderful service that adults have to learn how to navigate the bus, to learn how to balance their checkbooks, to go get groceries, to prepare meals. Excellent service, but because of the nature of the social work and their demanding jobs, each, um, each 
adult that I've seen gets to access these services about two hours a week. So again, great services, but can we do more? So in their time, they, the country measures its citizens on a, a metric called gross domestic happiness. And Bhutan citizens actually measure some of the ha most happiest um, citizens in the world. And that got me to thinking that could we consider these adults as contributors as to the gross domestic product economy as well as the gross domestic happiness economy? Could we s consider them as being contributors to this economy? And I know personally that when I have been around my sister, when she's got the twinkle in her eye and she's clever and she's smart and she's witty and she's engaged, she's ridiculously awesome, but my joy level and happiness level just goes through the roof when I'm around these adults. So it got me to think that could we structure or could we structure a system whereby these adults get to access their authentic abilities and joy and happiness, at the same time, moving the needle and the happiness factor for the rest of us that get to experience these amazing interactions. So about 10 years ago, my colleague and I got together, and she also has a loved one in a similar situation, and we started to brainstorm. How could we build out more for adults with special needs. We had lots of team building community sessions, think tank sessions, and we said, you know what, what if we allowed them to access their authentic abilities within the infrastructure of education? So with that in mind, we decided to call this educational infrastructure College of Adaptive Arts. And we opened our doors in July of 2009. And the first day, no one showed up. <laughs> but my business partner, being the infinite, optimal, positive, joyful person that she is, did not even skip one beat and said, no problem, we'll just call this a teacher work day. <laughs> so, so over time, let's see, so this is where, okay. So we did create this college environment, and over time, that, that semester, that summer session, we had one course offering musical theater, because her background's in musical theater, and we had 12 students by the end of the session. And it was a pretty joyful space, and we decided we would welcome all adults to this college, even if they were just learning how to read or write. We let those adults know that we'd like them only to sign up for classes that they have an interest in, learning more about, whether it's really a, something that they love and thrive at, and it's their comfort zone, or something new, just like any adult in the community. Um, each class is just one hour long, and there's no reading, there's no writing, there's no tests, there's no papers, there's no homework, there's no supplies to forget. All learning happens within that sacred hour. So in 2009, we had one option, and we had um, 12 students. Uh, fast forward to winter quarter 2020, we have over 55 course offerings, and we have 128 students enrolled in the college. So our mindset at this college is this, edu this educational environment is a personal journey without measurement against the pace and level of others. Everyone is supporting each other's learning, personal learning journey, enjoying and relishing <coughs> each other's innate talents, whether they're in dance or art or computer or voice or podcasting or film or gaming, paralleling a traditional adult, adult learning model similar to a community college campus. And the concepts that they practice so diligently within their hallowed 
halls, walls of this adaptive college are then taken out and showcased in the community at various community performances throughout the month, where, whether it's at a Rotary luncheon, holiday luncheon, <clears throat> or performing at Tim Tebow's Night to Shine prom, or at a Cisco team building day. Credits are issued and they're based on exposure and experience. We've got a most joyful annual graduation ceremony that happens each December. And we issue diplomas, which are privately accredited and non-transferable based on their exposure to the concepts. We issue undergraduate diplomas, we issue graduate diplomas, we issue postgraduate diplomas. But the exciting thing is that because this is a lifelong journey, educational journey, we welcome and encourage them to continue to come back and re-enroll in any class they want for as long as they want. So Special Olympics has an amazing model set up and they have for 50 years whereby adults with differing abilities can access a new sport each season for as long as they are interested in participating. What if in addition to all that's out there as far as services for adults with disabilities, we add a parallel infrastructure of lifelong education for adults with special needs who also want to continue to learn and grow and become the best versions of themselves. In this college, we believe we are building a win-win model that benefits adults with special needs and their care providers and the general community at large who gets to experience this palpable joy through their community performances and classroom visits and tours and volunteer opportunities. Can we do more? We believe the answer to this question is a resounding yes. We are creating a lifelong educational infrastructure and it's right down the street from here. And it's arguably one of the most happiest places you'll, you'll ever experience. There's learning, there's laughter, there's creativity, there's joy, there's steadfast support and encouragement from hundreds of students, parents, care providers, professors, and community friends. And there are more just yearning out there to come to fruition right around the corner in the future. We can do more to enrich the lives, including the lives of my sister, by adding this incredibly rich layer of education to significantly move the needle of gross domestic happiness, certainly for adults with special needs, as well as the rest of us. Thank you. <laughs>